This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and I'm talking a little bit about the finale to the Learn to Knit lessons for machine knitters. Now, I have over 30 videos up on YouTube that will show you all of the most basic techniques for machine knitting. And now we're going to do a project together, a simple child's v-neck pullover. So I had to go shopping, of course. Now I went to Hobby Lo Lobby for some yarn. No affiliation. I used Hobby Lobby because they are on my way home and I thought I'd be able to find yarn that you can find too. You want to keep the receipt because it's customary to return any completely unopened, unused yarn. So you don't wind all of your yarn into balls right away. You save a couple out in case you don't use them. Now the yarn that I chose, the brand is I Love This Yarn. And I chose it because I was looking for a light worsted weight yarn that had some variegation. Since the sweater is so very plain, I can use busy yarn. I normally use solid colors for almost all of my machine knitting. And then I have patterns and designs that, that stand out in the solid colors. But for this little project, since it's going to be plain, I can use a busy variegated yarn. Now the yarn that I chose, since it's for a child, is a yarn that is 100% acrylic. And if you rotate the wrappers on the yarn, you can see quite a bit of information about the yarn. Let's see how close I can get away with being to this wrapper for this yarn. It says on the wrapper that it is 100% acrylic. It also says that it's 5 ounces, 140 grams, 251 yards. And I won't talk about meters because <laughs> Americans like to do yards. They're familiar. And then down here, there's a little skein showing the thickness of the yarn, the temperature at which the yarn can be washed, and that is in centigrade. The square with the circle in it means you can machine wash this. The iron with the cross through it means don't iron this. The triangle with the cross through it means don't bleach it. And then it has a little marking down here showing what size knitting needle you can use with it. And over here, what size crochet hook you can use. And then it has two squares. Each square represents a four inch gauge sample that a hand knitter or crocheter might make and how many stitches or single crochets they would get. Now you can substitute another light worsted or another light four ply for this yarn as long as the gauge matches. And since we have these standard markings on yarn labels, that's an advantage. One other thing to mention is that you need the die lot to match. This is lot 1514 and I made sure that each ball of yarn was from lot 1514. There was more than one lot in the little bin full of yarn so I hunted through and found them so they match. I have found that if you use two different die lots you almost never get away with it. It does show. So make sure your die lots match. Now I mentioned in a previous lesson that it's really not a good idea to knit straight from the skein of yarn because skeins of yarn tend to be stuck together inside, they tend to be tangled. It's very, very important to rewind the yarn and you need a, a yarn winder to do that. I'll show a couple of them very briefly. This big winder is my favorite. It holds a lot of yarn and I thread it first here and then through this little tension dial and then here. Then I go through one of these two arms and catch the yarn in the center of this large cone. Now I, I tend to hold it for a little while with this one. Now as soon as I get it started I need it to feed plenty of yarn so I'm going to pull a little yarn out and kind of get it started. I also like to hold it the whole time I'm winding just to make sure that there aren't any knots in the yarn. I don't really hold it firmly. I'm just 
feeling it as it goes by. Here's the first ball of yarn. I wound quite a bit of yarn on here and then I encountered a knot. I always cut the yarn at a knot, cut the knot away. I'll have to weave an extra end into the seam but that's worth doing because the sweater will turn out much better. Now here's how the yarn looks wound on this very large yarn winder and if I wanted I could take this whole cone off and set it on the floor and I could feed the yarn from the outside. The other option is to take the cake of yarn off and it looks like that. Let me just loosely wind the outside on and then find the inside. It needs to be wound so loosely that no tension at all is required to lift the yarn up out of the center and in no case should the cake of yarn be lifted up off the table by my pulling on this yarn. So this is wound just perfectly for knitting. That was rather a fancy and expensive yarn winder but here's another one that can also clamp on the edge of a table and it's far less expensive and I'm just going to bring the camera down and show the handle on it. This is how, how this one turns and you can use one of these and I'm going to show one more method for winding the yarn. Here's one more way to, to wind yarn and this is very low tech. This is called a NOS pin. Basically this is less than a foot of old broomstick that my husband cut off for me. You could buy a fancy one though from a spinning supply and basically all you do is wind around it and kind of get started. Now what I'm doing is I'm trying to wind around what I've already wound and kind of at an angle. Get a little closer to the top here. and You can see it, it forming especially since the yarn changes color. And every so often I turn the stick. Just try to keep coming across it at an angle like this. Turn the stick occasionally. This is very low tech. You could also use a broomstick lace pin, which is just a giant knitting needle, or you could use the empty cardboard from a roll of paper towels, or you could probably use a toilet paper tube. You just need a cylinder with a, a big enough opening in the middle so that you can pull the yarn from the center when you're through. It's an old hand knitters and spinners trick to do it this way, and you don't have to invest fifteen to twenty five dollars in a little yarn winder but I'm sure that you'll want a little yarn winder. They are just wonderful. They're very fast. Okay, here I've wound the yarn in a ball on the stick and I'm going to slide it off. This is how it looks. Hollow in the middle, nice round ball. And I'm just going to fish in the middle and find the center. Well, I got a little chunk, but that's okay. Now, that center will pull out and it'll work just great. This is the last way to prepare the yarn for the knitting machine. What I do is I get a trash can or a bucket and I strip the yarn into it. That is, I'm just, I'm just dropping the yarn. I'm holding it above and just yanking it down and dropping it. And it's making a big pile of spaghetti in that bucket. The whole point of this yarn preparation is so that the yarn can flow completely freely into the machine. And doing it this way works just fine for that.